So now that we have some files imported in Lightroom, we can make a quick tour of the library and develop module. Um, the print module will be useful, but we will use that in the future. So within the library, we can select different files. Um, and as we do, we can see some basic metadata. So this is shot at 105 millimeters, f2.8, 60th of a second. Um, this one, I think, was on a different camera. So here it says 55 millimeters, f5.6. Um, we can also search based on different criteria. So we can search based on text in the files. Um, that would really only matter if we've added tags and or captions to them. We can search based on attribute, and that has to do with whether we've rated the files, which we will come back to in a second. You can also search based on metadata. So this shows us the dates of our pictures. It shows us the cameras our pictures were taken. We can look at the lenses our pictures were taken. Um, and any of these columns of metadata can be um, oh, we click here, sorry, um, changed to different things. Um, when I photograph a wedding, I usually find that my outdoor pictures are at low ISO sensitivities and my indoor pictures are at high ISO sensitivities. So with high ISO pictures, The consequence to the image is that they're very grainy. Um, I don't know if the video will show that. Um, there's a good deal of grain there. Um, so if I were to photograph an indoor-outdoor event, I might search for all the pictures taken at high ISOs and adjust noise reduction on them separately. But really, that's just an example. So we do have some basic adjustments we can make to these pictures just in the library module. I'm going to go down here and zoom the thumbnails in a little bit and show you that I can select this picture and I can increase the exposure, the contrast. I can also double click on the picture to look at just the picture um, and make these adjustments again. And these just kind of give you little clicks. You can do one arrow to increase the exposure a little bit or a double arrow. I think that one arrow is about one stop and the double area, oh, actually it shows us it's a third stop and one stop um, change in exposure. Um, so this is actually the effect you would get if you had shot it at ISO 3200 instead of 1600. Um, you can also affect the highlights shadows separately or click down the blacks. There's this tool called Clarity which will increase edge definition. We can also increase vibrance to add a little more color to the picture. You can also see that we've created all sorts of weird artifacts here. These strange color patterns and grain noise here and that's really just because I've way over edited this picture. This white halo at the edge of the tooth here is a good sign of overuse of the clarity or a sharpening tool. Reset all just sets everything back to the default settings. So a nice thing about the library module is if you're making basic settings to two pictures, you can just select both pictures. Um, if you use the shift key, you can select one picture and then the last and kind of get a whole row of pictures. If you use the command key or control on Windows, you can select pictures leaving gaps in between, gaps in the middle, so you can just select all the pictures you want. Now that I've selected these pictures, I can hit exposure. You can see it increases the exposure on all of them, which is a simple but effective way to edit all your pictures, to, to, to do batch edits. Now, there are a number, there's a number of ways to add filters to your picture. I'm going to add this 
strip of pictures down here to our interface. You can see here it says filter. Filter means different things in different programs. Um, in Photoshop, filter refers to dramatic adjustments to your pictures like fake lens flares and distortions or turning your picture into a fake watercolor or something like that. In Lightroom and other organizing programs, filter has to do with filtering data. Um, so if I were to go through these pictures, I could give them a rating system. So I don't like this one, let's say, and I'm just saying these, these aren't real value judgments. I'm just making arbitrary um, categorizations of these. So I could go through my pictures and say, I like this one, like this one, like this one. This is good, this is good. Not a fan of this like this, like this, like the weird unbroken geode rock, like the disc break, like this weird femoral neck thing, and I like sky pictures. Now I've made one edit of pictures, um, and by when I mean edit, I mean one organizational edit. So if I move back to the thumbnails, you can see some of these pictures have one star and some of them have two. And just to clarify, you just add a star by hitting the number one on your keyboard. And if I want to add four stars, I hit four. And if I want it to be two stars, I hit two. And if I want to set it back to zero, zero. So this is sort of a pretend photo essay. These pictures don't really go together, but I've kind of composed a sequence where I want to have some clouds and some pictures of this bone and this rock and this balloon. I don't know what it all means, but I can see that there's a lot of redundant pictures here. Down here in the filter section, I'm going to choose filter for one star. And now all the pictures that have no rating have disappeared. So now maybe I can be a little more selective. I can look through these three pictures of this skull and say, you know, this is the definitive one. So I'll give it two stars now. And then I can like between these and say, you know, this is really the better picture of mint leaves. Looking at these two balloons, I might say, you know, I'm going to go with the close-up. Same choice for the rock. Um, I only have one picture of this disc break, but maybe I didn't really need it anyway, so I'm not going to change the rating. Here, I'm going to look at these three pictures of this bone. And I'll go with the detail. And I'll pick this as my cloud picture of choice. So going back to thumbnail view, I can now change my filtering for two stars. And I can see my final edit. So when you're working on assignments and exercises, generally you'll shoot more pictures than you need. And using these stars and filters for stars is a great way to narrow down your edit. So there are other things you can add. You can flag or not flag the pictures by clicking on this little flag here. And then you can filter for only flagged pictures. You can set a color label. And now I'll filter for only green pictures. These extra labeling and rating systems are just so you can have more complex rating system. So maybe if you were photographing and if you were photographing a wedding, you could have stars that rate how you could first have one star for the keeper pictures. You could have two stars for the pictures that are all going to go on the website for the wedding. You could have three stars for pictures that are going to the album and five stars for pictures that you're going to make big prints of. Um, you then might want to go in again and have green label for pictures of the ceremony and blue label for pictures of the party. You might want to do um, the flag for pictures with the bride and groom in them, um, just so you have more ways to narrow down and search within the pictures. So, you know, you might want to find all the pictures of the party with a rating of three. And that way you would just choose, I can't remember which color, I think it was blue and three. 
Um, sorry if it was green. I don't remember which color I just said. So that's just one example of why you might want to have that. You can also add captions and titles. So I could call this Mint. I could call this Rock. And then within the text search, if I search Mint, that'll be the only picture that comes up. So that's another way you can add. There's, there's many ways to do it. I find for most things, just using different numbers of stars will do the job to get, to, to get a good range of filtering done.